Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. If there's one thing we've learned when filming Wild Kingdom, it's that nature can be harsh. Not all animals are strong and healthy enough to survive. In tonight's episode, we'll explore the relationship between predator and prey. Each plays an important role in keeping animal populations in check. The old and the sickly animals are naturally weeded out, leaving the strong and the healthy to produce the next generation. In fact, predators are only successful about 50% of their attempts to catch food. This reality can seem harsh, but it's absolutely necessary to create that delicate yet natural balance of the animals in the wild kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right here on RFD-TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by the company with coverage for everyone. Hello, welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Jim and I are both keyed up about the story we bring you today because it's about that magnificent creature, the leopard. Now, I suppose the best known fact about a leopard is that he has spots and can't change them. We also know that they like to drink milk. Beyond that, there are very few facts that we know about leopards because leopards are wary and elusive. Now, lions live out in the open country, and we know quite a bit about them. But leopards stay hidden, and because of this, they're extremely difficult to observe. They're difficult even to find. So while Jim and I were in Africa, we were quite thrilled to receive a message from a friend of ours who lives on the edge of the great Kalahari Desert. He discovered a leopard's den, and he thought we'd be able to keep it under observation. This was a rare opportunity to really study leopards and was too exciting to pass up. So we moved our camp to the Kalahari and there spent many weeks studying the habits and movements of this beautiful and savage cat. The Kalahari is a lonely world of sand, dry grass, and brush. It was in a thicket that we discovered the den, a natural hideout underneath an old fallen tree and beneath a screen of thorn bushes. Here a mother leopard was rearing her cub, feeding him and watching over him. Except when hunting, she stayed close by, for until he grows in size and skill, a young leopard is quite defenseless. So the mother spends most of her time near the den. The male leopard goes it alone. I first spotted him in the grass near a herd of springbok. They didn't run away. They knew by his movements that he wasn't hunting. But why not, I wondered. The answer was that he already had a springbok carcass stored up a tree. When a leopard's made a kill and satisfied his need for food, he doesn't abandon the remains, but carries them up to a high limb beyond the reach of jackals and hyenas. The leopard may then go without eating for three or four days. When he's hungry again, instead of making a fresh kill, he returns to the old one. At this point, I saw a large baboon strolling through the grass not far away. The leopard either didn't notice or didn't care. He went on with his meal, tearing at the meat with his sharp teeth set in powerful jaws. Baboons travel in troops or tribes. I figured this must be a leader who'd left his tribe nearby to explore the area. I don't suppose he was looking for a fight, but when he surprised the leopard preoccupied with his meal, he got one.
say the baboon was lucky, because if the leopard had been hungry, it would have been a different story. I returned to the den to find that the cub had made a discovery, a hedgehog, probably the first he'd ever seen. Instinctively, he jumps. And this is how young leopards learn that hedgehogs are prickly. The thorn bush is prickly too, so he gives it a swat. Curled up into a spiny ball, head and feet inside, the hedgehog is quite secure. But the cub has to find out for himself that there's just no way in. Now the hedgehog can get on with the business of hunting snails, worms, beetles, and other insects. A mouse sticks his nose out of his hole. Here's something else that calls for investigation. The mouse ducks back, but the cub knows it's in there. Now, curiosity may or may not kill a cat, but a bite on the nose is something he won't forget. A young cub like that probably doesn't venture very far from the den. They're inquisitive and courageous, but not very sure-footed. The adult leopards, however, range far and wide. Jim undertook a study of their behavior, which proved most difficult. In order to cover as much ground as possible, our friend Charles and I made a systematic patrol of the area each morning to look for signs of leopards. One morning, after several unsuccessful searches, we left camp rather discouraged. We headed out across the pan, which is favored by antelopes, because a salt lick is found there. Animal tracks are plentiful, and leopards habitually hunt in a place like this. We hadn't gone far before we found what we were hunting for. Leopard tracks, and fresh ones too. The sand hadn't filled them in. Across the bare ground, it was easy to see the tracks from the truck. We followed the trail to where the leopard had moved off into the bush. From there, we'd have to track him on foot. Charles and I had been tracking for about three hours without seeing a leopard. I was about to give up when I saw vultures, a sure sign of a kill. This could be the end of the trail. Suddenly, there he was. It's a big male leopard, and he's killed a wildebeest. He seems to have satisfied his hunger. The vultures are waiting for him to leave. And that's what he does. He's the perfect picture of a powerful predator. His hunger satisfied, he moved off to some secret lair to sleep away the rest of the day. Since we knew that the leopard would return in a few days for another meal, this seemed a good place to build a blind for observation. I had hardly gotten inside before they started moving in. White-backed vultures and lappet faced vultures. They converged on the carcass from all parts of the sky. But for some reason, they're cautious. Suddenly, I saw a movement in the brush. And to my surprise, it was the leopard cub. And as I looked ahead, there was his mother. The mother was limping as she approached the carcass. As she came closer, the vultures took off. Normally, leopards don't share their food. But since the male went off and left his kill, it's fair game for the female and her cub. This may have been the cub's first hunting trip, and he made the most of it. 
Instinct prompted him to stalk his prey. That wildebeest must have weighed close to 400 pounds, yet so great is the leopard's strength and so strong her grip that she dragged it several feet along the ground. Once I thought she'd got wind of me, and in defense of her cub, she'd have been quite ready to attack me, even though leopards are not normally man-eaters. But she seemed satisfied and let the cub play on. Finally, she limped away to remove what must have been a thorn in her paw. The cub wasn't hungry. Like all kittens, he was just plain playful. Wildebeests are easy prey for leopards here because many of them are weak from lack of water. Nevertheless, they'll continue to move into the area, instinctively following an ancient riverbed in search of life-giving water. Even though they find only dust, they'll return year after year. We kept the leopard's den under observation each day. While traveling to and from the area, we often saw large herds of antelope. The springbok were especially numerous. These lovely gazelles survive the dry season in the Kalahari by using their sharp hooves to dig out bulbs and water roots. In this remote region, they hadn't learned to fear men, and even the noise of our truck didn't scare them. The springbok is distinguished by the dark stripe dividing the brown back and white stomach. They were quite content to let me snap all the pictures I wanted until, in the distance, the male leopard appeared. And this time, it was apparent he was on the prowl. Hiding himself in the grass, he moved downwind of the herd. They hadn't seen him, but clearly they sensed the danger was near. Moving stealthily, the cat singled out his intended victim. When he struck, the herd leaped off to safety, all but one which the leopard carried off to satisfy his appetite for the next few days. Not long after I reached the leopard's den, who should appear on the scene but old Mr. Tortoise, that armored wonder whose basic structure hasn't changed in a hundred million years. He never wanders far from home for the very good reason that his cruising speed is only about a hundred yards an hour. Like the desert tortoise of the United States, he's partial to cactus. The very best part of the plant is away up out of reach, but that's no real problem to him. Dinner is served. A tortoise never has tooth trouble because he has no teeth. Instead, his jaws are fitted with horny edges which easily knife through the tough fiber. He's one of the few creatures I know of that chooses to feast on prickly pear cactus thorns and all. Leopard cub had been taking a nap while mother was off hunting. Now he decided to do a little more exploring. The tortoise caught his attention. The spring near the den was still running, even though the dry season had started, and the tortoise was thirsty. To take a drink, he immerses his face and pumps in water with his throat muscles. Now the explorer moves in. What sort of object is this? It's bigger than that prickly ball. Feels more like a stone or a log. But still, there's no reaction. Now there's an idea. Why not have a drink of water? 
Ouch! Don't like wet paws. Nothing much happening here. Still, it might bear watching. Except when he comes out to eat and drink, the tortoise spends most of the day in his burrow, out of the heat of the sun. And he could probably get in there just as well without any help from the cub. Mother still hasn't returned, but the leopards have company a young jackal sniffing around the den for scraps from the leopard's table. Again, the cub falls into the stalking posture. This one's alive, no doubt about it, alive and alert. Although the jackal is not a courageous animal, he's found he can stand up to the little cat. The cub has discovered, perhaps for the first time in his life, that some animals fight back. What's more, he enjoys it and makes a game out of it. Tiring of the game, the cub returns to the den. The jackal goes on looking for scraps, but stays alert, ready to run. For now, the cub contents himself with meat provided by mother. And when she comes home, she immediately checks to see that her youngster is safe. When a leopard is eating, it tolerates no interference, not even from mother. Now the jackal makes a move. Mother may take a cuffing from her cub, but she will defend him against all intruders. As the weeks passed, the little cub continued to progress under the watchful eyes of his mother. He felt safe and secure in the area around the den, knowing that he was protected by his mother against the hazards of the wild kingdom. Protection against the hazards of everyday living is the job of Mutual of Omaha. The Kalahari is full of surprises. The days are hot and dry, and the nights are cool even in the summers. It was always an exciting experience to go walking cross country, as I often did just to observe the wildlife. There was a small hill behind camp, beyond which the thick brush disappeared into a vast plain of grass, and red hartebeest abounded as far as the eye could see. But they were running away. So I knew there was something around that they feared much more than just a man with binoculars. And sure enough, Mother Leopard was on the prowl. In the bush, she becomes truly the spotted ghost, her irregular spots blending her into a natural pattern of sunlight and shadow. It wasn't the heart of beast she was stalking. It was a young baboon, separated from the tribe.
prey is watching, the leopard lies still. She moves when it does, and then freezes again. When she's come within range, she's a tightly coiled spring, waiting for the moment to strike. go by, the young cub takes to wandering farther and farther from the den, taking advantage of mother's absence to explore more and more of this great big world which he finds to be a storehouse of brand new adventures. A young wildebeest presents a fresh challenge. He's much too big for the cub to successfully overcome, but the instinct is there, and he just naturally has to stalk his prey a miniature edition of the adult leopard stalking game. tries to chase off his young tormentor. Those horns could kill the cub. But he's not lacking in courage, nor in skill. He even tries diversionary tactics. in progression from mouse to jackal to wildebeest, the playground of the frolicsome kitten is in reality the training ground of the mature hunter. Jim and I both felt that this chance to study leopards might well be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so we stayed on for many weeks. We saw many more things than we could possibly tell you about in our short time here, so for now our story is marked to be continued. Still to come is the home life story of a leopard family, the big male's behavior patrolling his territory, and many more delightful adventures of the cub we called Satan. So plan to be with us next week, won't you? When we continue our story of the spotted ghost of the wild kingdom. <laughs> The company with health insurance for people of all ages has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com. Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.